So one of the big things we've added in is something that was uh, has been you know asked of us uh, quite often over the last few years, uh, and that's the ability to do some versioning. And, and the versioning's been added in in, in two ways. Um, version by versioning, I mean I want to be able to control or be able to see. Uh, as I make modifications and have the ability to go back through historic versions of the same data. Um, so without having to create another working segment layer, I just want it to automatically, when I launch it in to go make a change, like I'm going to go apply a terror match correction uh, you know, or adjustment to my data set, I don't want to have to go through this whole process to be able to create additional layers and additional layers just in case I have to go backwards in time. So, uh, you know, if, you, if you've ever worked or, or gone through some of the, uh, the trainings with R2, he will take you through where you create these, you know, LIDAR 1, LIDAR 2, LIDAR 3, LIDAR 4, which represents each of your stages of your data processing. Um, so we've given a way now to incorporate all that within, uh, within the management system. Um, and so that it will actually keep track and allow you to move backwards through the data. So we're going to kind of look at this in two manners. One is just a, a dynamic versioning where if I do certain things, I want it to just create a copy of the data. Um, and then another one is going to be uh, the check, what we call checkpoints. So these are, I'm going to create data at known states. In other words, I know what they are when I create them and I know what they represent. So what I some point in time, I might want to go back to that particular state of data. You know, oh, it's been populated. Oh, it's had adjustment number one applied to it. It's had adjustment number two applied to it, um, and move back and forth. So these are all things that become very difficult to do with a simple IT backup because an IT backup is just you know the IT is going to run at six o'clock every evening and do the incremental backups of whatever's changed that day. Well, it doesn't take into account anything you're currently working on. Um, so it doesn't mean, uh, you know, your working segment layer that you're working with, well, if you get halfway through running a macro at the time the backup, backup kicks off, it means that half your data set has the macro applied to it and the other half doesn't, and you end up having to go through a lot of tapes and a lot of this and that to try to figure out what data set you really need to go to. So by incorporating that all into the management system, we kind of get a little bit better insight into uh, the data and a little bit better control as to what versions of the data. Now the caveat to that, of course, is that if I'm going to version data, I need to have space for the data, um, which means I need to have more drive space available for everything I'm going to do. So right off the bat, uh, the quickest and easiest one to do is to take my entire layer. So I'm going to open up my layer properties and to uh, go ahead and create versions on it. I'm only able to create versions of things that I enable within Environment Builder. So if I haven't enabled them there, I won't be able to create versions. Um, and that's to help give you control. And you also have control over the number of versions to help minimize the amount of space. So I'm going to create this dynamic version. It's going to create it for all the, all the ones on here. So this is my, my layer version. And because I'm running something as a process on a layer, I get my typical icon that I get with the process in layer, which means that in my layer properties, I also have a processing tab that says I'm creating file versions. And you can see here it's created 51 files, five seconds for those 51 files, and the process is complete. So what that means is if I look at any entity on this layer, we look at our properties tab where we typically look to see you know, what our files collection is, and you're going to see there's additional files in here now. And the additional files are marked in a way so you can see what they are. So we have, you know, um, in this particular case, I've got five different files that are associated with the entity. So we do a versioning of that on a layer basis or on an entity basis. So whatever file group is associated with the file with the entity at the time that it gets versioned is what gets versioned. So in this case here, I've got an LAS file, I've got an XML, a DJN, all of those files that I get an extra copy, right? So I've got now my current version, which is this layering version I've done, and I've got my backup version that was done. So it basically gave me a backup version to what I'm currently working with. The numbers are sequential. Um, so I, in fact, in this case here, I can see that at some point in the past, I had previous versions, which is why you see I'm, I'm starting somewhere down my stack. I'm not starting with, with version 0 and version 1. 
which is what you're going to see with raw entities. But, but it's given me now a single version. So I can also take and say, well, I've got a particular checklist step, and I want that checklist step to be set up and to allow versioning. So what I do is I find my checklist in Environment Builder. I go into Modify Group, and I search through the hundreds of columns of options that are on the side here, and I will come across one that is called Automatic Versioning. It's in the green section in the middle, which has got to do with all of the um, you know, kind of the project management side of things, the budgeting effort, stuff like that. So the automatic version, what I'm going to say is when I run this particular step, so I'm going to do this edit and running tear scan, I'm going to create an automatic version of that file. So that's enabled. I'm going to go back now to my GQ session and you know, turn on my direct drive. So what I'm going to do now is go in here to number 103, so I've launched 103. So if I go into MicroStation here, it's done a read of my, uh, it's done a, uh, done and launched my uh, 103 into there. It's also taken and made a copy. So I'm going to do that on a couple of these entities here. So I'm just going to launch them off and complete them, like we were doing. So what you see here, I'm on 115. I'm going to go ahead and flush those out, so that I'm all done with everything there. And let's go look at those entities. So here's 103. Set that up. And what you'll see here in 103 is my previous version um, was set to, you know, was that version 3 that I was working with. So I've created this additional version, and it was created by Quick Launch. So this is my quick launch created version. Um, so that's the one I was currently working with. So that's the one they made any modification to. And so I've got the two of them in here. You notice that the previous versions I had, I had version two in there. It did no longer exist. And that's because in this particular setup, uh, I've created a uh, you know a maximum number of two versions so that I don't end up having you know just an umpteen number of files and uh, I'm gone and basically popped off the other, the old version. So the dynamic versions will just keep adding things repetitively onto the stack, and when things get to too many numbers, it pushes them off the bottom of the stack. So I can't have too many files available. So the other type of versioning that I want to do is not that automatic type of versioning, but I want to be able to create a checklist. I want to be able to say that, well, these particular entities, um, so I'm going to select these entities here, and these particular entities have had the macro run. So what I want to do is create a checkpoint. So the checkpoint name is going to be macro run. You know, maybe that's uh, applied bare earth macro. Okay. And I'm going to do it, and it's doing it off of the selected set because it's automatically going into uh, the, into the um, working set and making sure that it can modify, you know, make a copy of those files without somebody modifying them in the meantime, that sort of thing. And what it's done now is it's created me another file, and this time it's under checkpoints. You see here, here's the one I called macro run. And so now I've got the ability where I can basically go back to two different types of, che of versions. One is the automatic version says, hey, just take me back to whatever was last done. And the checkpoint one is take me back to a known state of the data. So I've got two options to do that. I've got my uh, rollback version, which will take me to back to just whatever previous version I had. Now, once you roll back, you can't go back forward on a dynamic rollback. So it's just going to give you a little warning. And so now when I look at that properties, you're going to see in here that I've rolled back to version 3 and version 4 is gone. Right? The macro run was based on version 4. So what I have the ability to do is also to go to a checkpoint. So I can restore a checkpoint. Checkpoints are whatever ones you restore, whether they were previously done, uh, you know, forward and backwards within your workflow, wherever you want that to be. So here I can say, well, go backward, you know, go back forward to when the macro was run. So I'm going to restore the checkpoint on that particular one. 
and I can close that out. And when I look at that entity now, I'm going to see that I've got my file has been restored from the checkpoint. So it gives me all that control and I can go back and see kind of where I was at. Now, of course, you get to the end of a project, you know, and it's all well and good. I've been able to create these versions and do different things and had a lot of control over having options to, to go back and forth as I process, but now I've got all this extra data. I don't want to archive all that data. So what I want to do is go to my project utilities. And in my project utilities, I have an option in here that says for this particular one, I want to take uh, and delete all the versions that exist within the project. So I select my project, delete all versions. It's going to delete everything except for the current version. So when I look at my files collection in here, all of my checkpoints are now gone and I'm left with just whatever my current version was on each of those particular entities. So there's a lot of power to that, and you have to think it through a little bit as you, as you set up and decide how to implement that within your organization. But I think there's a lot more control that is put into the user's hands, um, and in particular into the, into the project lead's hands, as to what they do on a particular project and how they actually can work that through um, without having to involve the IT staff to be waiting on them to pull particular information or try to look through lots of different information. Um, and so that kind of gives us our versioning. I think just one last quick little thing here. Um, if you haven't noticed, uh, if you didn't notice in my properties, I do have an option in here to actually look at uh, files. And if you notice when I had the different versions, I could pick any one of those versions. So I actually have a quick way of launching in and just reviewing what those versions of my LAS files look like as well. And this is just a little setting in Environment Builder that allows me now to launch this off. And in this particular case, what I'm doing is I'm just going to launch that off and launch it into um, LP3, LP Viewer, um, which is just the, the free viewer that you get from uh, the LP360 side of things so that you can look at your data. So. Um, these two are kind of related. Um, where do you set or how do you control the maximum number of versions for, you know, like how many LAS files you can have? Uh, and is there a maximum? to that or can you make it open-ended uh, by default we set it off to be um, to be five and uh, you, you end up setting those in the um, you end up setting it in on the the entities uh, on the files tab um, so if I look at so there's some version control for files um, so you pick your particular file types that you want and within here is where I set my version control. So I've enabled version, and I can enable both versions, or I can enable just dynamic or just checkpoint version. So I don't have to have them all enabled. I've got options, and I've got different maximum version numbers that I can have for each one. So that's in under my entities, the particular entity type that you're working with. And these don't have to be just LAS files. They can be imagery, uh, any anything else that you want to set up. So this is kind of where we're going to set those maximum values. Okay. Great, thanks. Uh, another question is, uh, you, you know, you mentioned obviously you want to be careful with this because you, you're going to create a requirement for more for more storage. The versions are going to take up space. Where, where are the versioned files kept? Are they in the GOQ warehouse? The version files are, are kept in the GOQ warehouse, and they're kept in the same uh, warehouse location as your other files. And what it does is we have put in some controls here to allow you to have rollover um, so that when a version is created uh, you can take and set up um, you know you basically set it so if you run out of space that it doesn't hold things up and it'll roll over and start putting that information into a new warehouse location and uh, so we've got a, a ability to kind of add that in there but other than that when you create them they're created in the same warehouse location now they are created in subdirectories uh, so you don't have to worry about uh, them being uh, lopped in with the other other information. Um, and I think the other thing to to keep in mind too is that you know this really I really encourage users to use our export files command when trying to get the information back out of GeoQ because between versions and our caching system, you've got a lot of information that's on that warehouse. And the best thing to do is use your export files command, which will allow GeoQ just to serve 
you know, basically write the LAS files from that drive onto your external hard drive that you're trying to make your deliverable for, or your external hard drive you're trying to use for your, uh, your, uh, you know, official project archiving things like that. And it'll make sure it's putting the correct version out there, um, and instead of users having to figure out, okay, which directory do I want to pull from, things like that. 